I use these mini solar panels in our photovoltaic workshops. These mini panels, also called modules, consist of 10 tiny solar cells joined in series. Look closely and you will see 10 rectangular crystals. These are the solar cells, each cell producing a little over half a volt in sunlight, creating a 6 volt total output for each panel. These 6 volt modules measure 4 by 5 centimeters and produce less than 1 eighth of a watt of power. But with these small modules it is possible to construct working models of solar arrays and experiment with different configurations. The basic construction of each unit is simple. I mounted the modules at 45 degrees by gluing them into an angled kerf cut in a small wood base. The black and red wires connect to the negative and positive terminals of the unit. Black is negative, red positive. I used a hacksaw to create some small breadboard pieces. Glued to the back, they provide a method to connect to the panels. Connecting a meter to the panel, we can measure voltage and current. I know this panel can produce up to 6 volts, so I set my meter range to 20 volts. Alligator clips are convenient for securing the probes during measurement. These panels will produce a reading with ambient room light, but direct sunlight is the best. In sunlight, the panel produces slightly under 6 volts. To measure current, I set the meter to the 200 milliamp range. The panel produces 25 to 30 milliamps under direct sunlight. This type of voltage and current reading have a special designation in the photovoltaic industry. The voltage reading we took is designated VOC or voltage open circuit. No load is connected to the panel. The current reading is designated ISC or current short circuit. This is the maximum amperage the panel produces under standard light conditions. If you look at the back of a professionally made panel, you will see a ratings document with values for VOC and ISC under standard light conditions. Joining panels in series increases voltage. I'll use these two AA battery cells to demonstrate how this works. I measure 1.56 volts at this first battery. and the second one measures 1.61 volts. Pushing the two batteries together so that the positive terminal of one battery touches the negative terminal of the other produces 3.17 volts. The sum of the two voltages, 1.56 plus 1.61 yields 3.17. We will use this same procedure with our solar panels. Here I have two panels. They produce close to 6 volts each. Connecting the positive terminal of this first panel to the negative terminal of the second connects them in series, plus to minus. Measuring the voltage across the two panels shows close to 12 volts, the sum of the voltages of the two panels. Interestingly, measuring current from the two panels connected in series, we get 30 milliamps. This is basically the average current output from both panels, not the sum or total potential output. It turns out you have to connect panels in parallel to increase current. Panels connected in series, like this, increase voltage, but the current remains the average of the output of the two panels. To increase current, the panels must be connected in parallel, like this. This configuration basically doubles the current, but this time the voltage does not increase. It remains close to the average voltage of the two panels. Let's look at this relationship in a four panel string. A row of panels connected in series is called a string. This string consists of four mini panels. Again, I'm connecting plus terminal to minus terminal of each adjacent module.
The voltmeter is connected at each end of this string. Our meter appears to have a problem. If you are familiar with manual digital meters, you will know that the problem is, I have left the meter set to a range of 20 volts. Apparently the array is producing over 20 volts. Increasing the range, we get a reading of 23.5 volts. Solar panels are often configured to increase both voltage and current. This type of installation is called an array. Here is a model array that does just that, increases voltage and current. I've started with a four panel string. Its voltage is over 20 volts. Current output from this string is over 25 milliamperes. I've placed a second identical four panel string behind the first one and joined these two strings in parallel with positive to positive and negative to negative. This configuration produces over 20 volts, the same as a single four panel string, but the current increases. I have a reading of close to 60 milliamps, twice the current of a single four panel string. It is possible of course to take this further. Adding another string, we now have an array with 12 modules. The meter indicates 23.4 volts open circuit. Switching to measure current, our meter indicates this array is now producing well over 100 milliamps. I credit this high value to the improved solar conditions we had while taking this reading. A bright noon sun with a very clear sky. Again, this array combines series and parallel circuit components to increase voltage and current. In this basic demonstration of a solar array, we didn't discuss a number of issues that array designers have to consider. Issues like panel alignment, use of diodes to block reverse flow, and load balancing. Also, the power output of a system like this is measured in watts. Calculating watts requires measuring voltage and current with a load connected to the array. I will leave that calculation for another video. Don't attempt any experimenting like this if you are unfamiliar with electrical theory and safety. It is possible to create dangerous voltage and current levels, even with small panels. Large solar arrays, like this one, are configured to operate at very high voltage and current levels. Leave the design and operation of these systems to the professionals. Producing electricity from sunlight is a wonderful process. Photovoltaics will continue to play an important role in our attempts to reduce greenhouse gases and diversify our energy sources. The news this morning reports that the price of manufacturing solar panels has dropped to 50 cents a watt, down from $5 a watt just a few years ago. This technology is becoming affordable. We have more science and technology videos at our website, hyloroad.com. Follow the videos link.